Okay, just to pick up where we left off on the last video, we left off talking about traditional production systems and how keeping large amounts of inventory on hand is expensive for a company. So the solution here for that is something called lean thinking. Now lean thinking is a philosophy and a business strategy of manufacturing without waste. So its primary goal is to the eliminate waste of time and money that accompanies large inventories. And then we have something called just-in-time or JIT here. Just-in-time inventory focus, focuses on purchasing raw materials just in time for production and then completing finished goods just in time for delivery to customers. So by doing so companies eliminate the waste of storing and moving raw materials and finished goods. Most companies that adopt lean production have several common characteristics that help minimize the amount of inventory that's kept on hand, yet enable the company to quickly satisfy customer demand. So value stream mapping um, is when companies need to understand their current state of operations before they can attempt to remove waste and improve operations. So value stream maps, our VSM, are used to identify and visually illustrate the flow of materials and information for each family of products or services the company offers, all the way from order receipt to final delivery. Then we have production, which occurs in self-contained cells. So one of the first ways many companies identify on their current state VSM is the waste of time. Transportation and movement that results or occurs as a result of poor plant or office layout. So self-contained production cells minimize the time and cost involved with physically moving parts across the factory to other departments. Broad employee roles, now to combat waste of not utilizing people to their full potential, lean companies focus on employee empowerment. So employees working in production cells do more than operate a single machine. They also conduct maintenance, perform setups, inspect their own work, operate other machines, etc. Then we have a 5S workplace organization. Lean companies use a workplace organization called 5S to keep their work cells clean and organized. The 5S stands for sort, set in order, shine, standardize, and sustain. Points of storage is a storage system used to reduce the waste of transportation and movement. Continuous flow, the lean organization attempts to smooth the flow of production through the plant so the rate of production is the same as the rate of demand, thus reducing waste of overproduction waiting in inventory. The pull system, so no inventory system is made or no inventory is going to be made until a customer order has been received. In this demand pull system, the customer order, the demand, triggers the start of the production process and pulls the batch through the production. The demand pull system extends back to suppliers of materials who end up making frequent small deliveries of defect-free raw materials just in time for production. The lean pull system replaces the traditional push system in which large quantities of raw materials are pushed through the production process to be stored in finished goods inventory until sold. Then we have shorter manufacturing cycle times. So the focus on reducing manufacturing cycle times, the time between the start of production until the completion. Reduce setup times is another area of lean production. So lean companies can focus on reducing the time it takes to set up the machines used for more than one product. Employee training and technology can cut setup times from several hours to just a few minutes. Smaller batches, so large batch sizes, cause waste weighted wasted wait time. And therefore, one of the key elements of lean production is the use of smaller batches. Emphasis on quality, so lean companies focus on producing their products right the first and every time. Supply chain management, due to not having an inventory buffer, lean production requires close coordination with suppliers, and these suppliers must guarantee on-time delivery of free defect-free materials. Back flush costing, so due to the emphasis on just-in-time inventory, little or no raw materials are finished goods. Um, short manufacturing cycle times in a pull system, many lean products use a simplified accounting system called back flush. So with this type of costing, the production costs are not assigned to the units until they're finished or even sold, thereby saving the bookkeeping steps of moving the product through the various inventory accounts, again from raw materials um, into work in process and then into finished goods inventory and then into cost of goods sold ultimately. So the drawbacks here to lean production systems, there's no inventory buffers. So lean producers are vulnerable when problems strike suppliers or distributors. 
There could be delays in delivery. There could be personnel problems like strikes. Um, there could be a shortage of parts due to recalled products or weather related issues. Now, while lean practices tend to center on internal operational waste, green practices also consider the external waste that may occur as a result of the product. So lean and green operations focus on eliminating waste and empowering employees not only to increase economic profits, but also to preserve the planet and improve the lives of all people touched by the company. Now along with lean manufacturing, you'll also hear about something called total quality management or TQM. So lean companies strive for high quality production, poor quality materials or defective manufacturing processes can slow or even shut down production. So since a lean production system only produces what is currently needed, it's essential that the production consistently generate high quality products. So the goal of TQM is to provide customers with superior products and services. Each business function in the value chain continually examines its own activities to improve quality and eliminate defects and waste. They've already identified their primary activities, so now the companies can concentrate on making those activities more efficient or finding ways to eliminate any non-value added activities. Because carefully designed products and manufacturing processes reduce manufacturing times, inspections, rework, warranty claims, etc. This makes good financial sense. So as part of TQM, many companies prepare cost of quality reports. Now a cost of quality report um, categorizes and lists costs incurred by the company related to quality. So the first type of quality is typically considered prevention costs. These costs help avoid poor quality goods or services. Examples of prevention costs might include employee training, improved materials, preventative maintenance, the second type of quality cost are appraised costs. So these are costs that incurred are incurred to detect poor quality goods or services. Examples might be uh, cost of inspection through production, inspection of final products, and product testing. Now the third type of quality costs are internal failure costs. These help to avoid the delivery of poor quality goods or services to customers. An example of an internal failure cost is the cost incurred to rework the product to eliminate the defect before it's allowed to leave the plant. And then the fourth type of quality costs are external failure costs. This type of cost happens when the company has to incur cost after the defective product is delivered to the customer. It's most detrimental to a company as it causes low customer satisfaction rating and damage to the company's reputation. Now service firms and manufacturing companies also incur costs of quality. For example, CPA firms spend a lot of money providing ongoing professional training to their staff. They also develop standardized audit checklists to minimize the variability of audit procedures performed for each client. These measures help prevent audit failures. Both audit managers and partners review audit work papers to appraise whether the audit procedures performed and evidence gathered are sufficient on each audit engagement. If audit procedures or evidence is deemed to be lacking, which is an internal failure, then the audit manager or partner will instruct the audit team to perform additional procedures before the firm will issue an audit on the client's financial statements. This parallels the rework a manufacturer might perform on a product that is not up to par. So a cost of quality report can be prepared and it's going to identify, categorize, and quantify all of the costs the company incurs related to quality. This report can show the percentage of total costs of quality that are incurred in each cost category and can be used as a framework for decisions. So in performing a cost benefit analysis, some companies will compare all of the projected costs with all of the projected benefits. Other companies like to organize their cost benefit analysis by cost category so that managers have a better idea of how the quality initiative will affect each cost category. By spending more on conformance costs, which are prevention and appraisal costs, one saves even more on non-conformance costs, which would be your internal and external failure costs. So here's an example of a uh, quality report. 
you can see how Global Fitness identifies, categorizes, and quantifies all the costs incurred relating to quality, prevention, appraisal, internal failure, and external failure. And then they can help them see just how little they're spending on conformance costs, which are your prevention and appraisal costs. And most of their costs are on internal and external failure costs. Some of these costs must be estimated based on the experiences and judgments of the sales departments because they are ex estimates they may be subjective. TQM programs also emphasize non-financial measures such as defect rates, the number of customer complaints, and the number of warranty repairs that can be objectively measured.